couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lick and Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another Full Finger Style Arrangement lesson right here on Lick and Riff. And this time we're gonna have ourselves a double lesson for Amazing Grace. Why a double lesson? Because some of you asked for Tommy Emanuel's version of Amazing Grace, which is pretty complex, while others asked for a more simplified version, more fit for beginners and intermediates. So I decided to oblige both requests. In this video, we're gonna learn my arrangement aimed especially for beginners and intermediates. And then in the next lesson, we're gonna dissect and analyze Tommy Emanuel's brilliant arrangement and rearrangement of Amazing Grace. And as you'll see, the Amazing Grace composition is built around a blues pattern. And Tommy Emanuel took that blues pattern and turned it into a more walking bass, jazzy sort of blues, a more R&B sort of blues. So um, let's leave that for the next lesson. I'm gonna play my arrangement first and we're gonna learn it with tabs on the screen as usual. We're gonna dissect that arrangement, my arrangement, note by note, chord by chord, lick by lick. I'm a little out of breath, talking too much. Let's play. So it goes like this, enjoy. All right, so there are two parts to my arrangement. The first part is a bass solo, a very quiet, subtle sort of solo. And the second part takes the same solo up an octave and I added a little harmonizing for dramatic effect. So you can say that part one prepares for part two. So you start part one by two hammer on to four on the fifth string and then two two on the fourth. And you play the E bass string, the sixth string, right along with the last note, with the last E note, or right before that note. Okay? Or okay, for a more emotional effect. This is a sort of a straightforward sound. Okay? And this is kind of feeling it a little more. Um, and then there's this. It's six slide to four, and then two on the D string. You can pull off to two, okay? And then you slide back from four to six on the D string and play the E bass again. Okay, again, you can play the bass before the slide or along with it. Then you have okay, this. Six slide to four, two, again on the D string. You can pull off, okay? And then two again on the D string with A. Okay, and then okay, two slide to four, and then two on the fifth string. Okay, with E again. Okay, and 
you can embellish if you like. You can play. Okay? You can slide from one to two and then slide again. I think it's a little bit unnecessary, but just giving you options here. And then you can play two, hammer on to four, pull off to two. But it's the beginning of the arrangement, so I suggest you keep it clean for now. And then if you want to play it again, add a little bit embellishing. Then after this, you have this again. Okay? It's the same first line, but instead of two, two on the D string, you have one, two. You can play this again, but just want it to variate, so play it once. Or slide uh, from one to two as an embellishment. This is a good place to embellish. Then you have the same second line. But then you have this. Okay? This is B. I'm going to show you in a second. You play the open second string. Then you bar um, the second fret up to the fourth string. And you play the third string from two to four. Okay, slide. You slide the bar. Okay, and this bar prepares you to add six and seven on strings five and six. Okay, four. A B chord, and you don't play the E string. Okay, otherwise you get a B6, and that's not the harmony here. Okay, so this. Um, it's a G chord up here. Okay, but instead of putting the whole G shape, which is uncomfortable, just the head would suffice. And basically you can uh, just put 7 on the 6th string with 4, 4, 4 on strings 2, 3, and 4. And that makes it even easier. But if you want to play um, the, the note on the, the full arpeggio there, then you can put the finger on 6 on the 5th string. Your choice. So you slide. And then just a very simple subtle arpeggio. And then it's this. Right? And the reason I harmonized here is because the line is this. Right? Another slide from 6 to 4 and then 2 on the D string, the same melody. So to prevent it from being boring, I harmonized it. So it's 6 and 6 on strings 3 and 4. You slide it down to 4. Then you play 2 and 4 on strings 3 and 4. And then 1 and 2 with E. Okay, and this is an E chord. So, okay, 6, 6, 4, 4, 2 and 4, 1 and 2. Okay, uh, just the harmonized solo. Okay, nothing to be afraid of. So, you can play this if you like. Okay, or this. Then you repeat the second, third, and fourth licks. And then, okay, up to here, and then you have this, okay, just to uh, make it interesting, instead of playing okay, 2, 2 on the D string, I play 2 on the D string and then slide from 4 to 7 on the A string, on the 5th, okay, and then the E bass string, okay, it's, it's E, E, an E. Okay, instead of this, just to give it a little bit of effect. And then it's um, this. Four, slide to six on the D string, and then four again with two on the fifth string. Okay, this is B again, B5. And then this. Okay, or um, Faster slide. So it's um, four, six, four, double slide on the D string, and then two, then slide from four to seven on the fifth string with E. Okay, so it's right. So the whole first part. Take your time. Then A. Okay, just 
just very, very quietly, no lavish arpeggios here, just the chord notes. And then the harmony. Second, third, and fourth bar is the same. And then A, back to E. Okay, this is a good place to embellish. And then okay, the triple E note. And then or okay, bass first, and then okay, final line. Then starts the second part, the harmonized part, an octave higher than the previous part. Okay, this. Okay, so it's two slide to four on the third string, and then five on the second. Okay. And then you can play both with E, okay? or just five, okay? or both, and then, okay? now this four and four on strings one and three is a part of an E chord, a D shaped E chord, okay? D, D sharp, E, so four and four on strings, one and three. So you start with four and four, slide down to two, you play the open E string, then slide back up from two to four on strings one and three with the bass. So, okay, or play the bass before the note. That's the motif here. And then this again, the slide down to two and then the open E string, then A. Simple A chord, and you can just put two and two on strings two and three. We're not playing the D string, okay, so it's strings one, two, three, and five. So it's okay. and then this, okay, slide to six and seven on strings three and four. Now, this is a part of A, this is a part of it's six and seven here, so. And then you have uh, four and six on strings three and four. Okay, back to E. So it's A, E. And then you play the first and second lines again. And then it's B. Now you have a few options. It's seven, seven on the E string. Now you can put the whole B chord. Okay, and just, again, arpeggiate very subtly. Or you can put seven and eight on strings one and three with the open second string and your thumb on seven on the sixth string. Now this creates an uncomfortable position, but okay. But you have interesting options there because of the octave jump. So something like this. Again, very, very simple. Keep it simple. And then you have this. It's the four slide to two and then the open E string, okay? Harmony there, it's four and four on strings one and three, slide down to two and then the open E string. But then you have uh, four on the third string again with the open E string and the open E bass string. So it's okay, just to give it a little bit more harmony, so. And then the second, third, and fourth bars again. And then. Then you have this. And or. Now you can slide or. And or just this, keeping it simple after all. Um, it's five, four, six on strings two, three, and four. Okay, this is um, the D shape with an extra note to turn it into the C shape. You can put the whole C shape there, bar on four C shape. Right, but I think there's no need, especially if you have the open E string. You can start with the open E string and then right, slide the whole chord. It's a little bit too much, I think. Okay? So you can slide into five on the second string. 
right, and then play the rest of the chord. Right, so the open E string and the slide to five create an interesting unison. And then slide to four on the E string, then B. Okay? Again, you can play the whole chord or just leave your finger off of the D string for a more comfortable way to bar the chord and play strings one, two, three, and six, and then okay, this. Um, ending on an embellishment. So it's uh, two, four, two, hammer on, pull off on the E string, and then one on the third string with the open sixth string, with zero, two, zero, hammer on, pull off on the E string. Okay, so it's, okay. Now, why the one on the third string? Because if we did this, it would sound a little bit too empty and we want to finish on a chord. So just adding an extra chord note there. So, if you've been following the chord progression, it's E, A, E, and then B, and then E, um, which is a blues pattern. And it's not a 12 bar or an 8 bar blues pattern, but it is a blues pattern because you have the 1, the 4, and the 5 of the scale, the E, A, and B chords, uh, creating the same sort of chord progression as the blues. And that's what Tommy Emanuel based his arrangement on when he added approach notes, but we're gonna talk about it in the next lesson. Let's play the second part again. Okay, and then harmony. Then harmony again, A. Then A, E. Okay, the um, four and six here are part of the C shape. So it's E. Then you play the first and second lines. Again. Then B. Okay. Or. Okay. Then second, third, and fourth bars again um, after this. Okay. Um, then A. This E. And the lavish ending. Okay. Um, just to indicate the ending. So before you go practice this, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of lessons already waiting for you and it's all for free, including the tabs. Go download the tab from the website. The link is below in the description. Everything is for free, of course, but if you want to give something back to Lick and Riff, there is a large blue donation button right above the tab. You can't miss it. It's a beautiful donation button. How can you ignore it? And everything goes back into Lick and Riff, into making you your lessons, your guitar education. And I appreciate any donation whatsoever. And I thank you in advance for it. Now, uh, in the description, you'll also find the link to the next lesson, the second part, the Tommy Manual uh, arrangement lesson. And um, when you feel ready for it, go for it. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.